Before this video starts, I just want to let you know I've launched stickers on my store. We've got this sticker sheet of my six boys, and it also has two little rat paw prints on. And it's just a fun way to support me if you want to, and get something cute in return if you love the boys. So we've got these sticker sheets. We also have the Better Together design now on stickers, and also gold-plated enamel pins. Those are both available on my store, which is in the description. We are now open again, I did close my store shortly just while we moved, but if you want any supplies for your pets, whether it's rats, mice or other small pets, or just things designed by me like stickers and pins, we are now open and the link is in the description. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to our moving vlog, the actual one this time. The one where I actually move the pets because last time we didn't do much of that but this is the one we are actually moving and I'm in the new house, I've just finished painting the pet room as you've just seen and it's looking really really cute and you might have also noticed on those clips the bracelet I was wearing and I wanted to talk a bit more about that quickly. So I've partnered up with Wildlife Collections to show you their bracelets and they work with a range of different non-profits that work towards conservation for a range of different species like elephants, polar bears, turtles, and I think they just added sharks to the mix. And last year they raised $300,000 towards saving wildlife. So there are a range of bracelets to choose from in so many cool colours, and each one you purchase directly helps the species of your choice, and you also get your own individual animal to track when you purchase a bracelet. So I chose to go with the polar bear bracelets. I love bears and when I was a child, I went through a phase of being so hyper fixated and obsessed with polar bears and the idea of them not being around for future generations breaks my heart. So this is my bear that I can track using my bracelet. Her name is Hopin and she is 21 years old, which is such a good age for a bear. That is almost as old as I am, which is such a long time. And she has had at least six cubs in her lifetime and she's got two babies with her at the moment who are under a year old. So if we look at her tracking on the QR code, she is somewhere in the Hudson Bay area going back and forth on the ice. And I think that is so cool to know. So if you'd like a cute animal bracelet whilst also contributing towards conservation efforts, I will leave more information about Wildlife Collection and their bracelets in the description. I do also have a discount code for you, which is Emulology20, and that gets you 20% off your entire order. Okay, so I'm just about to go and pack up the rest of the pets. I'm holding my shoe. And I just want to quickly talk about the way that I'm going to do this because I think I mentioned this in the previous vlog, but you might not have seen that. So the way that I'm basically doing the rats and the mice is I'm sticking them all into smaller cages that obviously they're not gonna be in long term, but that makes it so much easier, even if you're just moving short term, literally just moving like up the road, you're gonna be doing so much in one day that you don't wanna to have to worry about having all of your animals in carriers and then setting up their big enclosures. So for the rats, I'm sticking them well. They're already in smaller cages because they were in introductions and those I can easily put into the car and stick them in when we get to this house and not have to worry too much. The mice, I also need to take them out of their bigger enclosure and stick them into the bin cage I made in the previous vlog. So I feel like this is gonna be a lot of time lapses, a lot of me just doing things with music over the top. So I apologize if I'm not talking too much, but 
I've got a lot to do, so I'm gonna go back to the old house, pack all of the pets up into their smaller cages, ready for them to all move tomorrow, and just bring things easily in like smaller cages, and then when I've got more time, after we've moved everything, I can then focus on setting up their big enclosures and getting them back to normal. So I guess that would be my biggest tip for you, especially if you're moving like I am. I've had a lot of questions over the past few weeks of how to move rats or mice or other small pets. And I'd say just have a smaller enclosure, whether it's a bin cage or a hamster cage for mice, or especially with rats, you are going to need different size enclosures for introductions eventually. So always have a smaller cage on hand just in case as a hospital cage or a spare cage. And for moving, just stick them in there. It's not going to hurt for a few days to be in a smaller cage with just food, water, bedding, a hammock, a few toys. It's not going to kill them to be in a smaller cage for a couple of days, maybe even up to a week. So just do that. That's going to make things so much easier than stressing about trying to set up their big cage when you're moving your entire life across the country or even just up the road like I am. So I'm just about to set up the bin cage for the mice. And what I'm gonna do for them is obviously give them a bit of fresh new bedding, but mostly fill this up with their old used bedding from this enclosure because having a new house, a new cage, and new bedding would be very, very scary for them. And having things that smell like them that have been peed on, like their bedding, and a few of their wooden items I'll also put in because that will help them feel much more safer and secure and familiar with their environment because if everything was brand new and smells different, that would be very scary for them. So doing things like this should help them with the move. And I recommend doing the same with your mice. Just use older bedding or just a bit of the old bedding. It doesn't have to be too much scattered on the top. And wooden things that do absorb their pee and smells a bit more like them. Things like that should help. So that's what I'm gonna do now and switch them over a bit. I don't know if anyone told you, but you are supposed to be on a diet. So don't go eating all the millet, please. So Meadow was the one that was living with Sprig for about a month, and Sprig was having lots of high calorie uh, weight gaining foods because she was quite old and losing weight. And Meadow definitely benefited from that. She is a little bit overweight, and uh, not as bad as she was a couple of weeks ago, but she's definitely um, quite rotund. <laughs> to say the least, so she's doing a bit better, but you definitely don't need to eat all of this millet to yourself, missus. I just thought before I put the rats into their big cage in the new house, they're all currently in smaller cages, I just thought I would explain what's happened with their introductions because I think the last thing I told you was that I was planning on doing introductions to have them all living together when we come to the new house. And obviously that video has never appeared and I've not really updated you because things did not go to plan. 
For the first two days or so, everything was pretty good. I probably should have been suspicious because they were too good. There was no scuffles, not a single noise from them. And I was like, you know what? I think things are actually gonna be okay. And about day two, I was showering and I just heard the biggest fight. So picture this, here is a mental image for you. Me, butt naked, jumping out the shower, trying to stop a rat fight with like nothing on, pulling the rats apart and it took a lot to get a whisper off of Pudding. He just decided that Pudding was his worst enemy and Pudding is such a sweetheart, he probably did nothing wrong. In fact, I know he didn't do anything wrong because it is all on Whisper's end. So yeah, they had a big fight and poor Pudding came out the other end with about three big gashes. He had one under his chin, one under his back leg, and I think one on his back as well. So not great, I obviously separated them straight away. I put Pudding, um, Bagel, Crumble and Humbug because they were all loving each other at this point. I put all of them into a cage together and then I kept Twix with Whisper because he's never ever shown any signs of aggression towards his brother because they are from the same litter. So I didn't want to straight away have him alone, separate, worst case scenario. So I have them together in a separate cage and I just had to separate them. So yeah, things did not go to plan. Obviously I'm not gonna have a video on that because I just scrapped it. Maybe I'll use clips of that in the future. But again, I didn't film any of the bad bits because I was so focused on trying to pack everything for the house and also sort them out while standing there butt naked in the pet room trying to pull them apart. So chaos all around, I just didn't feel like filming anything and that video is probably never gonna be seen. I guess things kind of half went to plan because the babies are living with Crumble and Humbug and I felt like having them in with some adults that do actually get along with them would be beneficial rather than putting everyone back into their original groups. So they're all happily together in a group and Twix and Whisper are together in a separate cage and I'm gonna split the big cage at the moment and just have them living on two separate tiers until I can get Whisper neutered. So I have messaged my vet, her name is Adele, and she used to work at a practice that was kind of local to me, and I think she's like in between practices at the moment, but she has also gone mobile, she does now travel around the UK, and I thought it was worth mentioning because she is a godsend when it comes to rats, and knowing things about rats, I've used her so much in the past with various different things, and I think she can go to all sorts of places in the Midlands, so Lincolnshire, Leicestershire, maybe like Northamptonshire, you will have to message her and ask her, but if you need a really good rat vet and you don't have one in your area, I will leave all of her details in the description, but I messaged her and asked her if she can new to Whisper, and I think she's like in between practices at the moment, so once she's moved to the other practice, I'm gonna book him in and get him done, and say goodbye to his balls because that was impressive, wasn't it? But yeah, there's probably people that will be like, this always happens to you, you always end up with aggressive rats, but I think Male rats are just like this sometimes and I think I just have bad luck and hopefully, fingers crossed, getting him sorted out, I can then reintroduce them and things will be fine. So that's the plan. Right now they are going to live separately until I can sort him out and get everything else sorted first. So it's not an emergency situation because he does have Twix and I'm just going to try to get him booked in as soon as possible and then try again in a few weeks time. Okay, my butt has gone to sleep so let's get up and set up this rat cage.
So I just thought I'd give you an honest look at how the pet room is looking because I still need to sort things. I've got supplies all over the place and I'm still trying to figure out where to put everything. So obviously we've got the rat cage with the boys all split into their two separate groups which fingers crossed shouldn't be for too much longer and they can all live in a unified group. And then their free room stuff is just kind of all over the place at the moment. I've still got a bunch of it in the garage which I'm thinking I'm going to put their rat tree on this table to kind of lift it up a bit and just be a bit more space efficient. That way I can stick their dig box underneath and just pull it out when they want to use it. So I'm thinking that might be a good idea. Um, and then I've just got a bunch of stuff on the window. Let's just ignore that. This Exoterra, I've never really had much of a use for it. So I am going to try and sell that on like Facebook or eBay or something. So then of course there's this reptile rack and I'm really trying hard to make this an actual reptile and invertebrate rack. I'm trying really hard not to use this as a dumping ground for like other supplies, so carriers and stuff. Really don't need to be in here on a day-to-day -day basis, so I might stick those in the garage. I'm not gonna use them every day, so they don't need to be there on display. And I just need to sort it, so I think I'm gonna get some better storage boxes for the top that actually all match. That just has like extra reptile and invertebrate supplies. And then of course we've got Orbit. She's gonna come out to like here, I think, with her upgrade. And then the snail is gonna go into her enclosure. The rest of the rack is just pretty empty. I've got a whole hot mess of wires going on and I need to stick my other invertebrates on like the millipedes. I need to decide where to put them, but I think at the moment I've just got too much space. I don't need these two racks. So I don't want to dump stuff on because I will use this space eventually, I'm sure. But it's just not looking the best, so I need to sort that out, but it's a process, it's fine. And then I've got my filming supplies in this corner and then the mice. So the mice are not gonna stay on this table forever. It really bugs me that it's not a perfect fit. And I am gonna go to Ikea at some point, maybe in the next few weeks, and get two Alex drawers to go either side of their enclosure, which should fit a bit more perfectly and seamlessly. And it will raise them up a little bit, which hopefully won't be too much of a problem in terms of me getting in to clean it. But that's gonna give me so much more storage for things like chew toys and just little bits treats and stuff can all go into the Alex drawer. So this is not a permanent setup. And then of course I do need to put a shelf kind of here to display stuff. So that is how the pet room is looking at the moment. It's not perfect. I don't expect it to be at this point. I do need to carry on tidying their supplies, but I think right now what I'm gonna focus on is doing the rats free room. I'm gonna get their rat tree, their cat tree, and their dig box. All of that is in the garage. So I'm gonna go and do that now. Pudding. Are you okay? <laughs> I think he's hot. It's not the nicest day today for them. So I'm going to go and get their free room stuff, maybe like their froggy pool, and just give them a few things to cool down in. So that's what I'm going to do right now. <laughs> and done for now. Anyway, I still need to add a few more things to this. I might drill a few things like hooks into the cat tree just to attach like chew toys and stuff. But we have got this thing, which I always put like a blanket in because I don't want their feet getting stuck in the gaps. We've got a java branch, we've got a tie holder, thingy majiggy. We've also got some of the Clyde Twitter Climbers um, toys. We've got this one and this one. And they've got a bunch of like tunnels and stuff, shredded cardboard. And then this is like a genius idea. Sticking it on a table saves so much space underneath. And underneath is their dig box. And then we've just got like cardboard boxes, foraging toys, the froggy sink more boxes, a tunnel, so it's still a work in progress. There's so many things and ideas I've got that are kind of like space efficient because being completely honest, I don't have that much space to work with. We are a little bit limited, but I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it look more cuter than this. So for now, this is gonna do, it's gonna give them space to actually run around and explore. I was also thinking sticking like shelves here for them to climb on maybe and like a little rope ladder thing that could be cool but I'm trying to be careful not to add too much height because I don't want them falling from like a great massive height especially crumble because he is very accident prone and really clumsy but I've got so many ideas for this space that I will probably do eventually it might take me a bit of a while but for now this is what they've got to play on and I don't think it looks too bad also just in case you're wondering this does look quite precarious but it is very very attached on there we've attached it to the cage and also zip tied it down there so no big, heavy, fat crumbles standing on this bit is going to knock it over because 
it is like very securely on there, so don't worry about that. But let's see what they think, shall we? Do you boys want to come out? Oh, that's so squeaky. Do you want to come see? Come see what I've done for you. Grumble. Hello. <laughs> come and see. Ta-da. What do you think? He's like, mm, I want to go back in there, please. Wow. Is that fun? Does that taste nice or something? <laughs> so pretty much everyone has moved besides her ball. All of our furniture and stuff has moved. And we left him to last so he doesn't get too stressed with things going in and out. But I need to go and get him. He is like the last thing that I need to get. Literally the entire of the other house is empty. I've just left him with his like carrier and stuff. I need to set it up before I bring him and just put all of his stuff in our bedroom. But her ball is the last missing piece and then we're pretty much done. I've got so much I need to sort through but Let's go and get Hubble. <laughs> Buddy, what are you doing down there? <laughs> so I just thought I'd give you an update on how Hubble is doing. He's doing so much better than he was um, a week ago when we moved in. He was terrified, I'd say for the first two days. The first day was horrible. He was so scared, he slept on my chest the entire night. And I woke up and he wasn't there. And we'd shut the bedroom door, we'd kept him shut in the bedroom with all of his stuff, so his litter tray, as you saw, for about the first two or three days, just to get him used to the house and all the noises and stuff. And we had the bedroom door shut and I could not find him anywhere. He wasn't in his carrier, he wasn't in his bed, he wasn't in our bed. And I freaked out and I almost started crying because I was convinced somehow magically he had escaped and got out. And I couldn't find him, I searched the entire house. And what he'd done, he pulled the uh, one of our towels off the radiator and dragged it behind the toilet and made like a little nest and was hiding under the towel so I felt so bad but he's doing so much better and he's really confident. I really do think he loves the new house, thankfully, so much more than the other one because he's got so much more space to run around and he skids from one end of the house to the other on the new wood flooring, so I think he's loving it. He likes to look out the windows and watch people. The first few days, whenever someone walked past, he would start shaking and his little ears were shaking whenever someone walked past the window, but now he is so nosy and so confident and weirdly, I'd say this entire moving experience has almost made him more affectionate towards us. He never really did that like typical cat thing where you stick your hand out and they walk past and like head bump you. He never really did that with us, but he does it every single time now. And he's so clingy and cuddly, which isn't really a bad thing. Like he's not nervous anymore. He's so confident with the windows and just running around. So I really do think he's enjoying it. And I'm so happy because he was the one I was the most scared about transitioning and the first few days were really sad watching him be so scared but now like a week later he's doing perfectly fine and I'm really happy. So that is it, we have pretty much moved in, I've just got so much stuff to sort through. The animals are in, the animals are sorted, that is the main thing. Just all of my stuff which is surrounding me and very much overwhelming me to sort through but the main thing is the animals are sorted and this video is pretty much done. I also just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the lovely messages you guys left on my house tour video. I was really not expecting that many people to be interested or caring what the inside of our house looks like, but you left some really nice comments, so thank you so much for that. Thank you to my channel members for your support. I will put your names on screen right here, right now, 
If you do want to become a channel member, you can join the membership button, which should be somewhere beneath this video, maybe like on the right hand side. I don't know, but if you do want to join that to see updates and see the things that get updated on there first, like new pets and stuff, the membership button is below this video. But yeah, I'm gonna try to unpack a few more things, I guess. I am so exhausted from this entire experience, but it's done now, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I don't have to do this again for a very long time. I think I worked out, on average, my entire life, I've moved on average every two years of my life, so I'm not doing this again anytime soon. It just gets worse and worse, especially with the more animals I get, so I'm not in any rush to repeat this anytime soon because I am exhausted. <laughs> But I will see you for next month's vlog, maybe with a few more updates on the house, obviously updates on the pets. If you're interested in house stuff, let me know because I can definitely, what on earth, I can definitely show that in the video if you're interested. We've got things like flooring. There's been so many things that have happened that have gone wrong and then been fixed and things have changed so much since I did that house tour. So if you are interested in seeing house things as I go along next month, please let me know because I love that kind of stuff. I would love to show it. Obviously I've got my Instagram for that, but if you are interested, I can show that in the vlogs too. But things are progressing, thankfully, and it's feeling a bit more like a house now. I bought pillows and stuff, which is exciting. So yeah, I will see you in next month's vlog. Don't forget to check out Wild Dove Collections, which is in the description. I'm still wearing my bracelet because I love it and I just love what it represents. So please check them out in the description. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. If you've got all the way to the end, well done because I have a feeling this might be my longest ever vlog yet. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'm about to go and sleep for probably the next two years because I am exhausted. But I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Say bye. Guess whose birthday it's going to be in the next vlog. Guess who's going to be one. It's me. <laughs> bye guys.